ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Chief Creative Officer of Pixar and the Walt Disney Animation Studios, and this year's honorary degree recipient, Cal Art's own John Lasseter. John Lasseter. The way this works is I read a citation that tells you what you already know about John, and then he'll speak. John, as an artist and an executive, you're a powerful cultural force in the world today, responsible for creating many of the world's best loved and most successful films. Born in Hollywood and raised in Whittier, where your mother, Jewel, encouraged your love of drawing and cartoons. You were a member of CalArt's first graduating class for the character animation program. You won, you won two Student Academy Awards for the films you created here at the Institute. While honoring your heroes of the past, Chuck Jones and Disney's Nine Old Men, you set your sights on the future. As an early believer in the potential of computer-generated animation, with the courage of your convictions, you co-founded Pixar, which sparked nothing less than a revolution in the art of animated feature filmmaking. Your first film as a director, Toy Story, won a special Oscar, and a string of Pixar blockbusters followed, including Monsters, Inc., Finding Nemo, The Incredibles, and Cars, among many others. When the Academy established a category for best animated feature, Pixar won an astonishing seven of the first 11 awarded. With the purchase of Pixar by the Walt Disney Company in 2006, you became both chief creative officer of Walt Disney and of the Pixar Animation Studios, and principal creative advisor to Walt Disney Imagineering. Disney's recent hits, including Tangled, Wreck-It Ralph, and this year's Oscar winner for animated feature, Frozen. The highest grossing animated film of all time. In a recent interview, uh, you quoted Steve Jobs, who said as you were working around the clock on Toy Story, you know, John, when I make a computer for Apple, it has a lifespan of three years. In five years, it's literally a doorstop. But if you do your job right, what you're creating can last forever. You're doing it, John. And CalArts is very proud of you. John, your work has brought joy to millions of people throughout the world and enhanced the visibility and reputation of CalArts along the way. Today, your alma mater welcomes you back to celebrate your originality, creativity, and extraordinary contributions to the art of animation and contemporary filmmaking. With the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees, and on the recommendation of the faculties of the California Institute of the Arts, I hereby confer on you the degree of Doctor of the Arts, Honoris Causa, together with all the rights, benefits, and privileges appertaining thereto.
One day this can be yours too, graduates. Thank you, President Levine, trustees, deans, faculty, parents, and especially, most importantly, the graduating class of CalArts 2014. It is awesome to be here today. Thanks for having me. I almost didn't go to CalArts. I almost didn't. Now, let me go back. Okay, let's go back. It was my senior year in high school. I had already been accepted to Pepperdine University with a scholarship, mind you. Without the, hey, 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 hey. My mom went to Pepperdine. My brother was going to Pepperdine. And my twin sister was on her way to Pepperdine. So I was going to, you know, it was the only school I had applied to because my mom had saved every penny to put me through Pepperdine. And it was, a, it was an important thing for the family. She wanted all of her kids to go to Pepperdine. But I loved cartoons. Even, even when it wasn't normal to like cartoons, I loved them. I would secretly race home after school to watch Bugs and his buddies at 4.30 on KTTV Channel 11 every day. When I was a freshman in high school, I read a book called The Art of Animation by Bob Thomas. And I realized at that moment, wait a minute, people actually make cartoons for a living. They get paid to make cartoons? And I, meant, I said, from that day on, that's what I want to do for a living. I want to work for the Walt Disney Animation Studio. So I started writing letters to the Disney and sending them drawings. And they answered me back, which was awesome. And it started a four-year correspondence. And then, after I had already been accepted to Pepperdine, I, re I received a letter from the Walt Disney Studios saying that they were starting a program at CalArts to teach the Disney style of character animation the following September, and they invited me to submit a portfolio, and I thought, this is destiny. But my, mom, but, but my mom was not so sure because she really wanted me to go to Pepperdine, at least for two years, she said. So I pleaded with my dad. My dad was the softie of the family, so I pleaded, Dad, come on. And so he agreed to take me to CalArts for a tour. Now, let me, let me give you a little important background for the story. My family and I went to the Whittier Church of Christ three times a week, Sunday morning, Sunday evening, and Wednesday night, my dad was a very open-minded guy, but here's some advice. President Levine, during a campus tour of CalArts, do not take church-going parents to the sub-level. Everybody up here knows what the sub-level is. I'll tell the parents with the, if you're not familiar with the sub-level. Um, let me try to describe it. It's down, it's the floor, way down deep at the bottom of the stairwell. And its walls are completely covered with layers and layers of art, art, art. Let's just call it art. Uh, that the students have painted over years. And um, which, and, and it is, which I'll say is extremely, so we say, interesting art. So as I walked around with my church-going dad, in the sub-level, mind you, uh, we stumbled upon an editing room where a student was editing his student film. He invited us in to watch it. It, can, it featured considerable nudity. Um, then we went to the residence hall, and they showed us the awesome swimming pool, which can which also featured considerable nudity. I wish I had a hole with me, because I would have crawled right in it. As we were driving away from CalArts that day, I thought, 
there is no way on God's green earth that my dad is ever going to let me go here. But my parents knew what animation meant to me, and my mother was an art teacher at Bell Gardens High School for 38 years. She always felt, she always felt that the arts is a noble profession. And knowing this, knowing how special this opportunity was, my parents let me attend Cal Arts. And it changed my life. Starting that following September of 1975, yes, I'm that old, um, there, were, there were only 20 of us in that first class of the character animation program at Cal Arts. We were a complete anomaly on campus, a little pocket of animation geeks in the middle of this, at the time, extremely avant-garde art school. We all, we all spent our time together because we all took the same classes, and every class was held in the same classroom, A113. Um, obviously, no other department wanted that room. It was on the first floor, no windows. Um, you know, near what we thought was the kitchen at first, but it turned out to be the Gamelon rehearsal room. It took me years to figure out what is it that they're playing, and I finally went to a concert and, and learned how awesome Gamelon was. But for four years, we heard everybody learn how to play it. Um, as you talk to other members of our class today, many of them will trace the success they've had in their careers to the things we learned in that classroom. So today, I want to share two things I learned at my time at CalArts that have been the most valuable to me. They're simple, but the simplest things are often the truest. First. Your voice is worthwhile, have faith in it. It is so important to create in your own voice, to hold on to what makes you unique, and have faith in your vision. A good percentage of that first class of character animation students was made up of people who had been writing to the Disney studios for many years like myself. It was amazing, each of us finally meeting others with the same passion for animation. It was like we finally found our tribe. Everyone was so different, though, with different tastes and different styles. We spent so much time together that we got to, to know each other really well, and we were the quickest to recognize and appreciate each other's individual talents. Tim Burton was a classmate of mine. He used, to, he used to sit in the Glendale Galleria food court all day and fill his sketchbooks with drawings of the people he found there. We would look at those drawings and go, oh my God, this guy's amazing, and we would be in hysterics with his vision of, of, of life. Because his style didn't fit with the Disney norm, some of our teachers tried to get him to draw differently. We didn't want him to change a bit. We, we wanted him to keep going the way he was. Brad Bird, John Musker, Chris Buck, Mike Giamo, all these people in my class were so talented and has had such unique voices and styles. You look around the class and think, these people are going to do amazing things. When we left CalArts, we wanted to shake up the world. It was the 70s. Cinema was going through an incredible revolution, and we wanted to do with animation what Lucas, Coppola, Spielberg, Scorsese, and Kubrick was doing with live action. But we did not enter a welcoming world. At that time, to the public, animation was defunct. Most of the old animation studios had shut down. And because television only showed animation Saturday morning and after school, people had started to think of it as being just for kids. Even when we reached Disney, the one place we thought we would fit in, we were shut down by the people who took over the studio after Disney's famous nine old men had retired. 
They just wanted to, to maintain the status quo. Amen, brother. Amen. Let me, let me go on because revenge is really sweet here. Um, we came in on fire with great ideas, but they did not want to hear our ideas. They, they, they just wanted us to keep our heads down and to do what we were told. There was all this young talent in the studio, but there was no avenue to express it. It took years and years before we started to get a chance to show what we could do. When our group, our, our fellow students, finally were, were able to start making their own movies, it was because of their unique voices that they were successful. Tim Burton's tilted view of suburbia and his eye for the hilarious unique detail created some of the most original visions cinema has ever seen. Brad Bird's unbelievable passion and refusal to settle for anything less than the absolute best best gave us an unforgettable family of superheroes in The Incredibles and a rat that became the greatest chef in Paris, true story, in Ratatouille. John Musker's intelligent, razor-sharp wit helped bring on the second golden age of Disney animation with a mermaid who lost her voice in The Little Mermaid and a, and a genie who redefined what an animated voice could be in Aladdin. Chris Buck, his deep love of heartfelt emotional stories, redefined the animation musical and made an emotional tale of two sisters into the most successful animated film of all time with Frozen. And Mike Giamo, his brilliant sense of design and color, took that Frozen tale of sisterly love and made it one of the most beautiful films ever made. We had to have faith in ourselves to hang in there long enough to succeed. We had to stay, our, stay ourselves long enough to show the unique things we had to offer. This requires balance, of course. You, you want to have confidence in your instincts and voice, but you also want to keep an open mind and stay receptive to what the rest of the world is going to teach you. This brings us to the second you turn the page? Sticky. This leads me to my second point, which is this. You need others. Too often people think that being unique means being isolated. And being a great artist means coming up with genius ideas out of nowhere. I'm standing here telling you nothing could be farther from the truth. I am the filmmaker today because of the people I've learned from. At the time, we had great teachers at the character animation program. These guys were great Disney artists who came out of retirement to teach us all they had learned as they invented the art form of animation with Walt Disney. They changed the, my way of thinking. Bill Moore, Elmer Plummer, T. He, Ken O'Connor, and Jack Hanna. But I learned just as much from my fellow students as I did from my teachers. In the library here at CalArts, now this was before home video, and I'm showing what an old geezer I really am here. Um, they had 16 millimeter prints of six of the Disney films, Snow White, Pinocchio, Dumbo, Bambi, Alice in Wonderland, and Peter Pan. The 16 millimeter projector we had in A113 could do single frame, reverse, and slow-mo and we would watch those films in the evening over and over and over, breaking them down, analyzing them frame by frame. To this day, when I remember scenes of those films, I remember them at the exact splice marks of these CalArts copies. We would go to the theater and see movies together as much, many times as we could. We would sit in coffee shops afterward, talking, analyzing them, trying to figure out what the filmmakers were doing and how they were doing it. And and then we start, when we started making our own student films, we'd look over each other's shoulders, bouncing ideas back and forth, and helping each other. Work with others. Lean on others. Celebrate others. On a personal level, you know this, making art is really hard. You're putting yourself into it, making yourself vulnerable. This can be scary and sometimes very difficult. 
You need others to support you. You need others to challenge you. You need others to be honest with you. When you do, they make you better. On a practical level, you cannot survive out in the world all by yourself. You will face crises in your career, and when those happen, you need others to help, you, help get you through it. Andrew Stanton, Pete Doctor, Joe Ramp, and I developed a way of working at Pixar that revolves around getting honest feedback from your fellow filmmakers as you are making your film. This approach, which is now used at Disney Animation as well, is based on the way we had all made our films at CalArts. Andrew, Pete, Joe, and I gave each other honest feedback, and because we trusted each other, we made each other better, we made our films better, and we got better as artists. When times got, got tough, and we've had many, many tough times, we pulled together and saved each other. We never could have survived alone. We never could have achieved what we have done alone. We could have never built Pixar alone. This is sometimes hard to remember, but it's true. In art, you are not competing against each other. This is a thing about the arts, especially that so many people forget. You will enter an industry out there that can be sometimes so cutthroat. And it seems like people spend more energy tearing others down than they spend making their own things great. But when you go to a great concert, you don't think, okay, I don't need to see any more concerts this year. When you go see a fantastic exhibition, you don't think, check that off, of, off the list, all done with art in my life. Great art makes you want more. If you see a terrific show, it makes you want to go out and see another. When everyone around you is doing great work, it makes things better for everybody. It makes audiences want more. It challenges artists to get better and to outdo themselves. The more we all help each other, the more we all benefit. So, go out there, help others, and make the pie bigger. <laughs> Graduating class of 2014, good luck, and may CalArts live on in you forever as it does in me. Thank you.